Welcome to episode 20 of Inside Politics, for teens, by teens, where I explore the politics and issues impacting our generation. I'm your host, Christina Lee, and today I'm focusing on Gen Z involvement in federal politics. For this, I've invited Representative Lori Trahan, the U.S. Representative for Massachusetts' 3rd Congressional District. Representative Trahan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Christina. How are you? I'm great as well. Thank you for asking. So let's jump right in. So first of all, what? Um, so the presidential election is coming up in November and everybody is thinking about it. So what can young people do to get involved in the election efforts despite not being able to vote? Yeah, I, uh, such a great question. Uh, and I really appreciate everyone leaning in, uh, especially at this moment. And we've seen the power of, of your generation over and over again, but especially this year. Uh, look, I think uh, for those of you who are not yet eligible to vote, you should think of yourself as election liaisons. Uh, in an ideal world, each household would have an election liaison, and these are individuals who are pushing everyone to get registered, to get to the polls, uh, or this year making sure um, that their ballots are in the mailbox or drop, dropped off at a local clerk's office on time. Um, the first thing that you should do is make sure your immediate network is registered to vote. And this includes your friends uh, who can vote, your family, your cousins, aunts and uncles, neighbors, uh, just checking in with those around you. Um, see if they're voting, what their plan is to vote. Um, and the next big thing you should do is make sure that you know the options in your community for folks to cast their vote. Uh, you know, we've got more options this year, and uh, I think everyone just needs to be informed of those options. And we've seen, you know, we've seen the way this the current president is trying to sow discord when it comes to voting by mail. So making sure you know uh, the options available, uh, how, um, how uh, secure they are, um, so that folks feel good about their vote being counted is, is really important. Um, you know, there is a website that I, I like to tell people about um, because you can do all these things right in one place. Um, Iwillvote.com, uh, you can go there to see if you're registered, and then you can also figure out the voting options available uh, to you. So, you know, tell people, your friends, your neighbors, um, to check out Iwillvote.com, and this is the most important election of our lifetime. Uh, and so staying informed is absolutely necessary if we're going to uh, defeat Donald Trump and start building back better uh, with Joe Biden in the White House. Yeah, definitely. So I guess when we talk, of, so let's say that we have parents that can vote, but when we try to start talking about politics in the household, it just kind of like gets kind of messy. So do you have any advice for fostering a respectful debate within your family? on political issues? Yeah, you know, it's a, that's a really important question. And I, um, it's, these discussions can be polarizing. And so I think you, uh, and it can be tough on a family. I, uh, I know family members who are, you know, uh, not wanting uh, to engage for fear that, you know, they may say the wrong thing or they may offend someone. Um, and so I think the key is being respectful. Uh, you are absolutely going to speak with people who disagree with you. That is absolutely a fact. Um, so it's just important that, you know, while you have these difficult uh, conversations, you remind yourself that everyone has a different experience in life and most people speak from their personal experiences. And so you have to listen. Uh, you have to respect that. Uh, and you also have to have patience. I mean, I think one thing I've tried to do my whole life is understand where an individual is coming from um, and, you know, listening to them before I speak. You know, sometimes you're, if you grow up uh, as an outspoken uh, young person, sometimes it's more important to be right or try to convince somebody of your point of view. And um, that just adds to the division uh, sometimes, you know, when you just kind of take a step back and, and listen. Uh, I think you can have a more productive conversation. Understood. So in terms of convincing our fellow peers who are either ineligible to vote or maybe think that if they are eligible to vote that their vote, that their vote won't matter in the grand scheme of things, how can we convince them that their efforts are important and impactful? Oh, you know, 
I am, uh, it is so important that everyone knows um, that one, you know, a campaign like this one, it goes far beyond you or me. Um, this is the most, uh, this is the most, you know, powerful thing we can do uh, is exercise our right to vote. And when you put that in the context of how pivotal a moment this is for our, for our country uh, and who the next president is, how much it matters, uh, I think no one can sit this one out. Um, uh, and I say that no matter who they're, you know, voting for. Uh, I think first and foremost, what's central to our democracy is the, the right that we are afforded uh, to go and vote, uh, not just in a presidential election, in every single uh, election. And so I think impressing upon that, uh, impressing upon, you know, your friends and your neighbors who maybe think that uh, there's so many votes cast, how could theirs possibly matter? Um, you know, we saw great turnout uh, in September and, you know, using that as a tool to get everyone off the sidelines and exercising um, that precious gift that we were given uh, is so important. Awesome. So even beyond this year's presidential election, where do you see the role of young people or Generation Z in the in the political sphere in the long run? Uh, you know, it's um, uh, I think the greatest um, the greatest asset our country has always had is our is our young people. Uh, you know, whether we're talking about you know, the Green New Deal, Medicare for All, Black Lives Matter. I mean, just this year alone, we've seen up close the power of our young people taking to the streets, to the commons, to parks, to say enough is enough, we want change. And that has happened throughout our history. Um, but it really is unbelievable to see it happen uh, in this moment where, you know, life is tumultuous, um, you know, COVID-19 has struck our country and it's exposed, you know, so many disparities. Uh, and I think what I would just, what I'd like to emphasize to young people is, you know, these movements, they only work if we stick with it. And sometimes in the past, we've been guilty of, you know, going from election to election, and even like a presidential election to a presidential election, uh, where we mobilize and we organize on like a four year um, cadence. And that's not good enough. You know, so many of the things that we want to change, they, they require us to be involved in our municipal elections, uh, in our statewide elections, uh, you know, whether it's mayor, city council, uh, your state representatives, certainly your federal representatives, and your president. And so we can't just disband uh, after, you know, a four-year election cycle. We have to stay together and keep pushing uh, for these policy prescriptions that we know are right. And so, um, and I think, uh, at least from the youth and the emerging leaders I talk to, I think you inherently get that. I mean, I think that's why we're seeing so much persistence right now. Uh, you know, all across our country is that words aren't enough, uh, marches aren't enough, um, everybody wants to see that convert into action, uh, no matter how long it takes. But, uh, you know, and so that gives me incredible hope. Um, but it is really important that, you know, after this election, we're going to have another one next year uh, across states in this country. And that's going to be as important for us to stay mobilized and stay uh, active in our in our politics. Mm -hmm, definitely. So I know that one reason why some um, some young people don't really feel like their efforts are going to matter is because they don't feel like their efforts are being seen or heard or acknowledged. So I guess for the viewers of this podcast, could you just address them directly and give them um, some statements or final thoughts to impel them to act and care about and get involved in politics? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, um, I guess I'd, it wasn't so, so long ago that I was a young person and I thought maybe, you know, some folks were dismissive. Um, I can tell you that um, uh, youth grassroots activism is, it's so alive right now, uh, probably an, more than any other time in, in my lifetime. And it has the attention of every single legislator. And I think uh, you know, the, the, the job of, 
youth activism and grassroots organizations is to hold uh, their elected representatives accountable uh, and making sure that, you know, that the conversation goes beyond um, just, you know, a, a talk in a, in a, you know, a conference room. It has to go, you know, what are you, what are you going to do? What's the legislation? Um, you know, what are the, the um, uh, what's the consortium of people we're going to work with to get this done? And they, people want to see results. And I think it's really important that, um, you know, keeping that pressure on, keeping the conversation going, not letting the movement die. I mean, I have to say, I had the unbelievable privilege of serving uh, with John Lewis. And, you know, he would always just remind us, just never give up. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, he had started... Uh, you know, the civil rights movement back when he was a young person. And, you know, even through, uh, you know, all of those years in Congress, I mean, he was still reminding people, I'm still at it. You have to stay, stay with it and never give up. Keep being bold. Keep, you know, fighting for change. And that feeling of continuous improvement, right? That motivation of like, we can always do better and we should always aspire to that, I think is something that, you know, we feel that with our young people because they're constantly looking at age old problems through fresh eyes um, and, you know, staying informed, staying engaged and certainly holding, uh, you know, those people who represent you, people like me, uh, accountable. Okay, okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining me here, Representative Trahan. I really appreciate it. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see everybody next time on Inside Politics. Thank you. You stay safe too, Christina. Hi everyone, this is Christina. Thank you so much for watching Inside Politics, and please feel free to check out the rest of the interviews on my channel. See you next time!